All right. So uh, this will be our lesson one here. Uh, yeah, let's do jump into it. I'll be teaching like an easier version of a game me and Sam created called Wormish. It's super easy. So right away, I'm going to delete the sprite. And you can put in whatever you want, but I'm just going to put in a square. Now, if you want to make it a perfect square, you hold shift. And I see no matter what, it's going to be a perfect 90 degree angle square. Um, that's a little cheat sheet there. <laughs> I don't know what else to really call it. Um, also, I go here. Nope, we're good. All right, so here's my square. I'm going to fill it up. Uh, the square right about here. So see this flag? This is your when start. So as soon as we run everything, this is the first, this is what's going to happen. And I want this to go to where it's at. Now, if you notice, I go here, it changes the coordinates here. But right now, I'm going to say the flag goes right back. Okay. Okay. So now we want to get movement. This is going to be our worm. We want it to go back left and right. So what I'm going to do is we have these things called if then statement. I put if then, oops, sensing. So the sensing is going to be all of our buttons, audio, backdrops. Don't worry, we'll get to that later. But if we press the key, and I want to make it the right arrow. We're going to move 10 steps. Now, I could put it here, and it's going to look fine, but the only problem is it's only going to do this once. So we want it to last forever. That forever has to go around just the if-then statement. Because if we put around the forever go, we're forever going to stay there. Okay, now I want to do this again, but just to make it easier, I'm just going to duplicate. I'm going to click dupl right-click the forever, put another when start. But this time I'm going to put left arrow and go to negative 10. So now if I run, I press the right arrow, I go left. Press the left arrow, I go left. You know, right, left, okay. So good, now we got our movement. All right, now we're gonna make technically the worm part. So when click, control, forever, repeat. I put it at about 9,999 because that's the maximum amount it can hold. So, then we're going to put create clone of myself. Now, the only reason we put that 9,999 is so it looks less glitchy and less jumpy. Um, with the, that, you know, you won't hear it. I mean, if you run it at 10, it'll go like, it'll make 10, it'll pause a bit, and then make another 10. So, if I do this, it's just so... There's so much that it just doesn't even bother. All right. So now we're going to do when I start as a clone forever, we're going to motion change Y by negative 10. There we go. And I'm also going to do a if then statement in that forever. If touching up here, edge, we're going to go back to control, delete this clone. So now, ooh, hmm, what did we do here? We did forever, repeat. Uh, I start as a clone forever, change Y and AFM, but forever if touching edge, oh, See here, I did a goof. Gotta make sure it's delete a clone, not create a clone. Which, oh, it's right here. It was hiding on me. <laughs> All right, it's okay. So we gotta put delete clone. There we go. So now I got this. I know that was something's wrong. I'm not a fan of this. I honestly prefer circles. So I'm just gonna make this a circle right away. I'm actually going to do that here. There. I'm just going to fill this in. I'm going to maybe shrink it. I mean, you can do it, but now it just looks a little square. All right. So I start. Now we got 
this little movement here. But now you're like, uh, it doesn't kind of look like a worm. Well, I know what you're thinking. So we can always change this. I'm going to put it right about here. And now I'm going to do go back to our go to settings. I'm going to put our coordinates there. So now we got this kind of like a worm looking movement going on here. So yeah, it's looking nice. All right. Uh, okay, so that pretty much sets up our worm. Now let's set up our obstacles. We're going to create a new sprite. And since the other one was a, this one's a circle, I guess I have to make this one a square. Whoops. Um, I'm also going to make it gray because you can put any color as long as it's not the color of your worm. I'm going to set it right about up here in the corner as much as like possible right there. I'm going to put and go to this position and then forever repeat we're going to put do our motion glide to this position where we're at and then we're going to glide to the other corner so i put glide so now it will go like that all right well that's step one now this is where we're going to get a little tricky here. <clears throat> Apologies, I'm a little sick here. Um, forever, we are going to repeat if, now we have our operations now. We're going to pick a number random 1 through, I'm going to say 50. And if that number equals 5, we can put it to any number as long as it's between 1 and 50. We'll put that in our if then statement. Then we want to create a clone. Now we're going to do when I start as a clone, forever change y by negative 10. Note the template might be a little different because it was a little slower. Um, I think I said to five, but you can set it to whatever you want. It's just 10 to five. That's about your reasonable range. Um, change to negative 10. So, and then if touching our edge again, we are going to delete this clone. All right. So now you notice how it's sending out our little squares. And it's all random too now. So now since we got an obstacle. We're gonna do if forever or when sorry not if when the flag is clicked forever if touching but notice we have color now. If we are touching color and we have to click on our gray or whatever color you set it to because we're back notice we're back under the worm too so don't put this under the square it has to be under the worm but if uh touching gray we are going to oh wait a minute we'll let we'll keep this aside yeah okay and i also want to do a duplicate of this and we're gonna so we're gonna do this for a clone all right so these two we're gonna just keep aside here but now we have to do something first we have to make a point system so we'll call this obviously points now we made a new variable we're gonna put this right about i don't know i like keep my points in the corner or whatever you can also click this hide it and you could do some crazy gut busting work to do your own little sprites but uh, well, may we'll maybe get to that later. Um, okay, so when we start the game, we're gonna put this right by our corners. It doesn't matter as long as it's not in a forever and it's the first thing. We're gonna put set points to zero, and we're going to also. I'm gonna do another one here. Actually, I'm just gonna put this all under one. I mean, just to make it simpler for you guys. And I'm gonna do forever repeat. Actually, we could just keep it normal. Change points by one. Now, if I start, all my points are going up. So 
like the longer I'm alive, it's like woohoo, I'm getting points. So I set my points to zero, and we're good. Okay, but not much is going on as a challenge. So it you notice how we have our told you to save these aside. These two here are if touching the color gray or whatever color you set it to. We're going to set points to zero if touching. So now, ooh, there. Now my points get set back to zero if I touch the gray. Now you can just slowly build your way back up. And yeah, so that's pretty much the whole game for lesson one. So yeah, um, when you're done, you can download this to your computer, save it as lesson one. And uh, if you have any questions, if it's not working or you did something wrong, you can post it on the Google groups and uh, maybe I could figure out the through your template and see what's wrong. Or if you come up with something even cooler, you know, you can post it on there. Um, yeah, this is just basic movement, basic obstacles, direction and points. So we'll get to some other stuff later. All right. Well, yeah, cool. Uh,